Hello, book two. Well, it's a bleak and barren Sunday here at Hyde Cottage. When we don't have a book, no books through the mail, nothing. Have to make do with each other. <laughs> There's a little Frida for you. Uh, and as usual, <laughs> on such a day, uh, I'm consoling myself by doing a tag. Uh, I'm trying another filming setup here because I heard from a number of people yesterday, in fact, a rather distressingly high number of people, uh, that the main interesting thing in my videos is the background, not what I'm saying. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying this. We'll see if this is any better. And the tag I have is uh, 25 random questions, which is exactly the kind of tag I love because it's so it's so pokey. It's so nosy. It, it digs into your the people behind all the book stuff on BookTube, and I love that. Uh, so I thought we'd just march right through them, see if we can bring a little... Uh, looky loo interest <laughs> to this bookless day. Uh, question number one is, do you have any pets? And we answered that. Yes, I do. I have one little dog. <laughs> I have one little miniature schnauzer named Frida, uh, who's quite a handful, although uh, I was realizing, I was startled to realize just the other day that if I'm doing the math correctly, and that could be wrong, I don't know anything about her, the origins of her life. I'm going on second or third hand information about that, but if I'm doing the math right, in July, she'll be a year old. Uh, but so far, it's, this is a very, very rare, one of the very rare times in my life when I have only one dog. That almost never happens, but that is true now. Uh, question number two, name three things that are physically close to you. Uh, well, there's the, <laughs> the, the normal trio, my iPhone, my MacBook, and my little puppy. <laughs> uh, but also books. There are always books near me. Uh, question number three, what's the weather like right now? It's cold. And it's as dark as twilight. It's windy. Uh, there's the threat of blustery rain. Uh, we had, here in Boston, we had a, a couple of days that approximated summer. In the middle of the day, the temperatures actually got comfortable. Uh, but today, no. All gone. <laughs> uh, uh, question number four, or, and question number three, the... the, the uh, I don't mean to be, you know, chicken little here, but... Every single thing, including this little perturbation in the weather here in Boston, every single indicator that I see makes me worry about what the summer is going to be like in the Northern Hemisphere, weather-wise. I'm really hoping I'm wrong, but it looks to me like the tropical storm-slash-hurricane season coming out of southern waters is itching. It looks like it's, it's waiting impatiently at the gate to get started. And that could be bad. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, question number four. Do you drive? Have you ever crashed? <laughs> Naturally, the two questions go together because you put an ordinary person who can't figure out how to rearrange their room in sole possession and occupation of a 2,000-pound piece of metal traveling at 60 miles an hour. So it makes sense that the two questions go together. But no, I've never driven, so I've never crashed. I've never sat behind the wheel of a car in my life. Don't know how to drive. Don't know the first thing about it. Uh, Question number five, what time did you wake up this morning? <laughs> That's easy, and you saw the culprit. Uh, Frida gets me up every morning between 5.30 and 6. Uh, it's almost never later. It's almost never earlier. It's just then. That's when she wants to get up, go out, walk around, and then come back. And then she's in a coma until noon. <laughs> so it's not like, I think she could probably postpone it, but she has this pattern so wherever she is, and usually by 5.30, 5.45, I am asleep. Very unwillingly, but still, I am asleep, usually by then, unless I've read all night long. And what she does is she just comes from wherever she is in this little room, she comes to the top of the bed, finds my face, and gently starts licking it <laughs> until I wake up. That's my alarm clock now, if I need one. Uh, uh, question number six. When was the last time you showered? Uh, right after we got back, um, five, uh, 50, 560, six o'clock, something like that. Uh, but only for five minutes. <laughs> Keep in mind, it's not a big deal. I, I shower like a normal person would. I'm not, I'm not in a Turkish bath. So uh, five minutes total from start to finish, including done toweling. <laughs> so, uh, question number seven, what was the last movie you saw? Uh, I saw, uh, Finally, the Han Solo, excuse me, the Han Solo movie. 
Uh, I didn't see it in the theater. I had a, I've had a screener forever, and I just haven't watched it. And I finally got since I knew that it's out now and starting to get reaction. I knew that my YouTube video feed would start to show me reviews, and I wanted to have seen the movie before I watched any of those. So so I watched it, and it was a big yawn. <laughs> I don't. I, this is exactly what I predicted years and years ago when people started saying, "Hey." I'm hearing rumors that they're going to make a brand new Star Wars movie and that it has nothing to do with George Lucas, that it's going to be... They're, they're, it's the possibility now that other people can direct a Star Wars movie, write a Star Wars movie, imagine a Star Wars movie. Do you think it'll be any good? There was a diehard Star Wars fan that was asking me that, knowing that I'm a diehard Star Trek fan and that I don't have any dog in the race with Star Wars. And I predicted even then, years ago, that there's a fate worse than a new Star Wars, a new non-George Lucas Star Wars being bad, and that would be for it to be boring, for it to be just any other movie, for the, the specialness of Star Wars to be gone. And I think we're well on our way <laughs> to to that. And the only reason that I'm not that I'm not feeling you know extra pompous about that is because it's already happened to Star Trek. <sighs> uh, anyway, uh, let's see here. Uh, question number eight: What does your last text message say uh, I don't really remember let's see here <laughs> okay uh, all right well <laughs> it's not gonna help much uh, it's from a drunken teenager <laughs> and it, uh, who, who texted late late last night I must have forgot that I that this the little signal went off uh, you it looks like it's not spelled correctly none of it is but it looks like it says you are so right which i like the sound of but they, but they never say that so it must be out of context <laughs> uh, i'll find out i'll find out later today what it's about uh question number nine what's your ringtone just a normal the one that comes with the phone i don't get enough actual phone calls to warrant figuring out how to change it uh question number 10 have you ever been to a different country why yes Yes, I have. Uh, question number 11. Do you like sushi? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Raw, uncooked food taken from pollutant-strewn ocean and then prepared and handled with the bare hands of a guy who's been doing who knows what in the back supply closet. Yeah, that's just my kind of food. Uncooked fish. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I've never had sushi. I will never have sushi. Thanks very much. <laughs> uh, question number 12. Uh, where do you buy your groceries? Uh, at the grocery store. It depends. I have two choices. One is a gigantic grocery store that's very elaborate. It will have any single thing I could ever possibly imagine wanting. And then there's a much smaller grocery store that's right near the house that doesn't have quite as much. I usually end up going there because I don't need quite as much. <laughs> so uh, the, the, I, it depends. It depends which, if I, need, if I need a big shop, then I go to the big grocery store. Uh, question number 13, have you ever taken medication to help you fall asleep faster? No. <laughs> I don't like sleeping. I don't know why anybody does. I don't know. I don't understand all the people I know who look forward to going to sleep. And falling unconscious with no guarantee of waking up. That's called dying. <laughs> and yet these people, these same people, would fight tooth and nail not to die. I don't get it. I, I don't understand it at all, that, that mind frame. I don't take any medication to help me get to sleep faster. I don't want to sleep at all. Uh, I don't, and I don't, uh, I don't plan on sleeping tonight. So we, we'll see how that goes. Uh, question number 14. How many siblings do you have? Three. Uh, question number 15. Desktop or laptop? Once upon a time, it might have been an active question, but for me, the question is completely settled once laptops became powerful, sleek, and lightweight. There's no question whatsoever. I don't sit at a desk anymore. I don't even have a desk anymore uh, that I use. I had a desk in the other room here at Hyde Cottage that it was, it had, all, it was, it had the whole setup, a little book-ended setup of reference works, a lamp, uh, drawers full of papers and whatnot. And I looked at it after years and years and years and realized I never even sit at this thing, much less use it. Why would I? Well, I can lay in bed with Frida right next to me doing all the same work. Now, uh, I could see maybe a desktop if I were a gamer or if I had some sort of really complex stuff to do. But uh, for what I do, word processing, no, I, a laptop only. <laughs> I never go back. Uh, so, and that was kind of a weird feeling. 
to realize that there's a whole piece of furniture, a whole idea behind a piece of furniture that I will never use again. That was weird. Uh, like, uh, like when I got rid of my uh, record player uh, or my manual typewriter, when I mothballed my manual typewriter, because there's no point to it anymore. That, that, that's very strange when technology changes like that right underneath your feet. Uh, question number 16. How old will you be turning on your next birthday? Uh, it's a little embarrassing, uh, but I have checked, double-checked, and triple-checked the math, and it turns out that my next birthday, I will, in fact, be turning 28. These things happen. Math is complex. Uh, question number 17. Uh, do you wear contacts or glasses? <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, absolutely! I wear contacts. Sure thing! Take a piece of plastic manufactured by slaves and lay it directly on my eyeball. <laughs> yeah, well, why wouldn't I do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't wear contacts while eating sushi. Thanks. <laughs> uh, question number 18. Do you color your hair? Why would I need to? Book two. What are you trying to say? <laughs> question number 19. Tell me some, something you're planning to do today. Well, it's kind of boring. <laughs> it's There's rain threatening, so the one variation in my otherwise completely ironclad routine is pretty much canceled. I, I, today was going to be the day when I till the ground in my little patch of would-be garden, just to get that over with. Go down into the basement, find a shovel of some kind, and dig up the ground. Even though I've seen many YouTube videos from people saying that you shouldn't till the ground, that the, there's a massive, a massive biome of bacteria and fungi and worms and whatnot, and when you till the ground, you're you're destroying all of that. You're throwing it into chaos and it needs time to recover, which is time it could be using to help your seeds. I, I don't think any I don't think any gardeners agree with each other at all. Uh, but that, I was going to do that, but I'm not going to be halfway through that when it starts raining. So instead, my answer to this question is the same that it will be every day forever. And that is the thing I'm planning on doing today is writing book reviews. <laughs> I'd like to get three done today for three different uh, venues. Uh, uh, question number 20 when was the last time you cried it wasn't what I expected I I, uh, I those of you who are new to the channel I last year lost my two sweet old dogs I had a skinny beautiful old pointer and a fat gassy old basset hound that I'd had since they were babies they grew up together with me and uh I lost them both. I lost the Basset Hound over a year ago. I lost the Pointer in the, in the fall. And uh, slowly but surely, that that wound has been skinning over so that it doesn't feel raw. And, of course, having a puppy has helped a lot with that. Uh, but those of, you, those of you who have experienced what I'm talking about, I, most people haven't. Most people are young. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, those of you who experienced real grief, not, you know, a great-grandmother in Oshkosh died. I met her once when I was a kid. I, ba I vaguely remember her. The family seems a little bit sad. But where you lose someone about whom you have said, I cannot live without you. When you lose someone who's a living part of you, and you look at the loss when it's coming, and you think, well, it'll happen, but I won't survive it. And you do survive it. But it's it's an indescribable pain. It, you can't describe it to someone who hasn't been through it. And so, and I know, I know lots of young people who have never lost anything that important, anyone that important in their life. Uh, but when, so I might, to a lot of you, I'm describing something that you you've never had firsthand experience of. But one of the things about it is that it's not predictable. You can't force it. You can't predict it in any way, and you don't know what's going to happen. If you're emotionally balanced, if you're still giving love and getting love then you immediately start to heal after a while. I was gone for a week after my Basset Hound died. I was gone for a day or two after my Pointer died. But I did come back. You do come back. If you don't come back, you're grieving wrong, unhealthily. Uh, but I did. And once you do come back and you're back in the world and you feel delicate at first and the wound is skinning over, you can think that you know what's going to trigger a storm of grief. And that's just what it feels like. For those of you who haven't gone through it, that's just what it feels like. 
You'll be just fine. You'll be doing something and thinking about other things and fully engaged in the world and suddenly a storm of grief will come upon you that's so strong you have to run from where you are in order to grieve in private. I've had that happen to me and you don't know when it's coming. And it has no expiration date. I've, I've had that happen to me for people who've been dead for 40 years. And it doesn't matter. It's every bit as strong. It doesn't. The storms don't happen as often. But when they happen, they happen just as strong. And uh, I have had that happen a couple of times with my girls, who in their declining months were in a very bad way. They were frightened. They were weak. They were frail. And they were incontinent. Uh, I've told this story to some of you before that they, I, they were incontinent. They had accidents all the time, which meant that I developed the habit of having air freshener cans and toilet paper and, and paper towels in every room within easy reach so that you, you know, you, so you didn't have to run and get something to stop an accident or to clean it up. And uh, I found the last of those just the other day. I was doing something else. I was looking for something else. I was thinking of totally other things when all of a sudden I moved a book and found a roll of toilet paper and a, an air freshener can and lost it. <laughs> just lost it completely, standing there. Just lost it completely. Because it's a severing. These are all little severings. The, the, the living memories of when my girls were in my life are one by one severing. They're one by one moving into the past, which is where they belong. Uh, but still, <laughs> it stings a little. Uh, so that was, it was a, just a little while ago that that happened. Uh, unfortunately, no one saw. Uh, question number 21. What is your perfect pizza topping? I don't like pizza. don't like pizza. don't like beer. don't like baseball. This, is a, this has led many people over the centuries to say that I'm not American. <laughs> uh, question number uh, 22. Uh, which do you prefer, cheeseburgers or hamburgers? Back when I made a choice like that, it would be hamburgers because I don't like cheese. Uh, now, of course, I have neither, because the, the meal can't get to your plate without torture. Knowing intentional, protracted torture, and that uh, should cancel the enjoyment of the meal. I know the only reason that Americans, that it doesn't for them, is because they don't know enough about it. I firmly believe that people are not uh, sociopathic monsters. <laughs> I firmly believe that. Most people aren't. If most people knew what happens to get their hamburger to their plate, they would stop eating hamburger. Uh, but <laughs> one way or another, I, I was, it was hamburgers when the choice was active. I don't have either one now. Uh, question number 23, have you ever had an all-nighter? <laughs> yes, I have, many times. I require very little sleep, and what sleep I require is negotiable, intensely negotiable. I can go without it. I can just decide to go without it and not be much worse for wear. Uh, so I often do that, especially if I'm caught up in a great book. Uh, question number 24, we're almost there. <laughs> uh, what color, what is your eye color? Blue. Uh, and question number 25, can you taste the difference between Coke and Pepsi? <laughs> I could once upon a time when Coke and Pepsi were served in bottles, in glass bottles. I firmly believe that at the time, probably a hundred cost-cutting measures ago, they were made with something a little closer to care or proprietorship. Than they are now. I don't believe. I don't believe. <laughs> I don't believe there is a difference in the taste between them now. Back then, I could, and I was firmly in the Pepsi camp. <laughs> uh, but I've stopped. I've stopped having uh, soft drinks on a regular basis like that. The only time I have them now, there's a the, there's a fry shop next door uh, that has a, they have a handful of things that I, that I'm willing to eat, and they're really good. Uh, and if you order enough food there they will give you a big bottle of soda of your choice. I always get grape, and then I'll drink that. And it's so gross. <laughs> that I, but when I'm done with that, I wonder why anybody would drink this stuff all the time. Uh, uh, and that's it. That is the, uh, the 25 random questions tag. And you know that I want all of you to do this tag, every single one of you. You know that I do. Uh, I jotted down names, uh, Curtis and Lukash and Peg, and Mark at Richardson Reads, and Olive, of course, and Jason, if only he would make tags. If only he would make videos. Oh. Uh, and Wilson, mm, Sean the Book Maniac. Uh, what about uh, uh, Adam at Memento Mori? Are you above doing tags? 
you know, just, uh, probably be all sarcastic and everything. Uh, and also, uh, Bruno. I've never tagged Bruno in a tag because he just he just joined BookTube, so I figured I would. Uh, but uh, or Roz, I know you'll probably have eight tags that I've tagged you in already. But I'll 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 try if I remember I'll list all these people down below so you can go and check out their channels because of course they're all wonderful. This is this is the cream of BookTube crop, and that's it. That is the twenty five random questions tag. I'd be happy to do another twenty five random questions. I'll look around and see if such a tag exists. Uh, but in the meantime, it did take my mind a bit. Off my bleak and barren Sunday. So that's good. <laughs> and I'll wrap this up for now. Uh, but I'll see you soon. Thank you, book two.